10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, lift off. The music plays, the microphones go hot. How the hell are you? Welcome into your home for wrestling, mixed martial arts, sports, talking to who? Hell of a lot more. Welcome to Beyond Ringside, live from the vault in the Full Range Entertainment Studios in beautiful Birmingham, Alabama. The modern day, the current incarnation of the vault and the BR Studios is mm, slowly coming to a close. We're getting ready for a major relocation. And hoping for the best in that. So definitely keep us in your thoughts in that particular regard as we are getting ready for a slight change in venue. Speaking of, we may be having another change in venue coming up in, uh, as early as next week. So keep your ears open right here on BeyondRingside.com. Also, for everybody listening on Ustream this afternoon, thank you very much. Glad to have you on board. The chat room is located over at BeyondRingside.com. Like to welcome in tag team partner, the one, the only, the Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis. Turn out the lights. The party's over. He went to the Willie Nelson concert last night is what he did. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome in multi-time world champion, our co-host, Tasha Simone. It's a in Mexico. I'm 100% Mexican today, but happy Mother's Day to everybody anyway. Hey, Meester. Hey, hey Meester. Want to see a donkey show? <laughs> like to welcome in tag team partner, The Voice, Ted Guinness. Just in time, I would like to just say, if you're not watching the NBA playoffs, and I know this is mixed, mixed martial arts and professional wrestling, but if you're not watching what's going on in the Western Conference right now with Golden State and San Antonio, you are missing one hell of a basketball series. Oh no! A great win for Golden State today, 10 points in overtime to even up the series. It's going two each then. Dan, I knew this. I, I knew it was getting up going at least six games. I was thinking well, seven, but I was hoping for six, and I was hoping San Antonio would pull it out. Well, I told Wicked, um, well, I'm a big Warriors fan. I grew up in the Bay Area, obviously, so you know I've followed the Warriors, and I've been suffering for the last, I don't know, 17, 18 years just to even have something to pray for. Even with Chris Mullen there. With the run TMC days, which was completely destroyed when they traded Mitch Richmond to Sacramento for Billy Owens. Right. God, do I hate Whoever the GM, I think it was Don Nelson still as the GM pulled he that was. trigger. It was but I told, I told Wicked on Twitter that I was picking Golden State in six. And if the refs had not been screwing Golden State in game one, this would be 3 1 Golden State. And, and if we could have, if San Antonio could have hit one shot in that last three minutes and 44 seconds, this would be 3 1 San Antonio. It would. And as, uh, let me pull out a phrase that I love to use. Hey, no, just, no, no, because you used it first, so don't even know. No, I'm just, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pull out a phrase I used to love to use on GCW TV is no. that if it's in butts were candy and nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas. As it is, it's 2-2 going into San Antonio on Tuesday. And it's gonna be a hell of a game Tuesday night. Oh, I'm yes. San Antonio in six. I'm, I'm so, I have, okay, I already have a bet with our guest from last week, Wiggy Gator. I'm not doing the bet because that's not my team. If it was the Rockets, it'd be totally different. See, the Rockets are my team. It I just like Tim Duncan. I respect Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan is one of my favorite players, if not my favorite player in the league. I, I respect Tim Duncan as well, but the thing is, is that you say San Antonio in six. I say Golden State in six. I'm just throwing it out there. It doesn't have to be anything major, just a friendly wager between the Oracle of Ominous and The Voice. No, because the only thing I bet if I can't punch somebody or physically beat somebody up, I don't bet. I don't bet. I don't bet on anybody besides myself. I don't bet on anybody to have any kind of outcome. I'm just not a betting man. Now, if you bet me, I could beat somebody's ass. I'm like, you're on. That's different. I'll tell you what. I'll put twenty dollars on you versus Paulie any day. I'm sure you will. And so will Luke yes. Gallows. And Luke Gallows said that he did not say. That I have been beating Paulie's, that uh, Paulie beat my ass. So I asked him. I said, "Hey, he was oh the knockout king himself." I was like, "Well, for what I've heard, you've been telling everybody that Luke or that uh, Paulie beat my ass." He's like, "That's not what I said." I was like, "I better not be." I was like, "I understand if you do because you know the guy pays you." I was like, "You know what he's going to do is he's going to go there, he's going to whitewash his walls, get rid of all those fans he painted on the wall, and then go back and paint some more." That's okay. Well, in that case, I am going to call out Miss. I was a world champion for a couple of months, Tiffany Rock, 
and say, Tiffany, you have been busted out. Not only are you not ever going to be a wrestler or a worker, you're also a liar. Well, there you go. And, Eddie, you guys missed out on the fact that Chavo Guerrero I heard. Her, and Hernandez I showed heard. up at the event. I heard. They showed up in this big Camaro. This Camaro, this white Camaro comes barreling down. And myself and uh, Damon are standing there. We see him pull up, and I was like, I think that's him. They go up, and they, of course, they look at the guy with the mohawk. What are we, we don't know what we're doing. I said, Gallows is in the ring. Go get him. Damon escorted him in there, walked him in there, kind of hung out. They saw these big wildcat helmets, like these big like mascot heads. Put them on. Nobody knew because nobody knew that they were going to be there, with the exception of Spiral, uh-huh. Mike and Tracy, Dan, uh, myself, and Damon. And everybody else, when he told me and Damon to go look out for him, uh, they, everybody thought it was a rib. Like uh, Dropkick Styles is standing there, and this is a rib. Is this, is this a rib? Is this a rib? I was like, this is a shoot. He's yeah. not going to tell me to go stand outside and look for somebody. But it, it was fun. They, were, they were really nice, though. They really were. They were cool. Styles thinks everything's a rib. You can tell him he's going over and he thinks it's a rib. Because it is. It normally <laughs> is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true. But you guys missed it, man. Al, I know you guys have heard. We'll go ahead and talk about it really quick. Yes, Chris Knox did get his nose broke. Yeah. Three minutes into the match, he bled everywhere. And not only that, he also strained tendons and ligaments uh, in his ankle and damn near broke his ankle in that same match right before he got his nose broke. And, and Jeremy he- Foster with his knee off the – Jeremy Foster would wrestle in high definition. Uh, he went uh, – Jeremy Foster went for a quick schoolboy, like a shoot schoolboy, you know, and rolled up on Knox's uh, ankle. And he, I thought he hit his head and knocked himself out, to be honest with you, because he hit so awkwardly. It was a one count he kicked out, but he kind of stumbled, and when he stumbled around, he came running full speed into that knee that, uh, that, knee that uh, Foster does out of the corner. Just caught him dead. Landed on top of him, Knox rolled over immediately to his side, you know, like all fighters do. He didn't want to stay on his back. Rolled over, kind of trickled, and then when he stood up, it gushed. I mean, people were running all over the place. Everybody was scared to come up there. Nobody knew what his reaction was going to be. I thought he was going to snap and kill Jeremy Foster. He did go in and slap Foster and then hit him with probably one of the biggest Peter Gabriels you've ever seen. <laughs> and then poor Foster did catch a power bomb on the Shamrocks and Shenanigans. And for the first time, Knox sat down with it. And it was, it was, yeah. He was very classy about it. Like Tasha asked, Tasha's like, he better beat the kid's ass. He was going to. But we were at a school show. There were about 250 kids there. They weren't supposed to be back till next year, but the superintendent specifically asked them to come in for May for this fundraiser. And Knox knew that going in. And Jeremy Foster is a good kid. Hell of a kid. You know, he is. He's just, when he, he's full speed. He's one of those guys that what he sees a Ring of Honor, he wants to, he wants to, emulate. to copy. Emulate. Emulate would be a better word. He wants to emulate that. If there's many kids like that. But Foster's intelligent enough. I pulled him aside afterwards because everybody, when we went to the back, everybody thought that Knox was going to just start pulling a bishop and just start breaking stuff. He did not. He went in there and he just told Foster just to leave him alone. And, and we you know, know we took, sir. You, you know, I mean, Knox, Knox to me has always been a classy individual. And yeah. you know, from what I'm hearing and from you know just from knowing those two guys, it was like you know receipt earned in the ring, receipt paid in the ring, and that's the end of it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, that, and, you know, Foster and Cody both, because afterwards there was so much blood that when Cody went to, Cody O'Connor went to go hit his, uh, his jumping, vaulting, uh, spinning back elbow, he almost fell. But Damon yeah. realized what was going on because he slipped because there was blood everywhere, guys. And when I say there's blood everywhere, there was blood everywhere. There was as much blood coming out of Knox that came out of me, and Eddie, you will know this, from the Peach State uh, War Games. War Games that we had. There was that much blood. Yeah. It was all Knox. All of it was Knox. But he finished the match. You know, for what it's worth, people people are like, I wouldn't have finished the match. I would have went straight to the back. Well, you're not Chris Knox. That's why I manage Chris Knox. People ask me all the time, you guys, Ted, you've been there. Eddie, you've been there. Yep. Tasha, I mean, you, you, I'm sure that you can relate. Guys, I mean, hey, man, what can I do to be with you guys? Nothing. Because you won't be. Chris That's Knox had his nose broke. <laughs> Tasha and I know- I know Tasha. I mean, that's no offense to those guys. That's no offense to those guys. I don't want anybody. Who's who's burying me? I'm not burying anybody. 
but it takes a special breed to be associated with the merchants of death. That's right. all it is. With, I could have 5,000 people. There could be a guy with a Merchants of Death shirt in every promotion right now. But why? That waters it down. We're not the NWO. We want the Merchants of Death name, whether it be the Unlucky Charms, whether it be Call Like a Bomb Pandora, whether it be Murder One, Johnny Slaughter, Orion Bishop, Corey Hollis, Danny Only, the Prophets of Doom, which are extension of the Merchants of Death, being Andrew Pendleton III, Strychnot, and Danny Only. Okay, they're out there. You have the Concrete Gorillas doing uh, doing uh, Progression Pro Wrestling right now out of Atlanta. Jeter and Blaze, they're still associated with the Merchants of Death, proudly. There's a reason why there's only been a select few guys that have been Chip Day and Corey Hollis were extensions. You know, they're what we call uh, momentary Merchants of Death. Affiliates. Where they come out and did a, an association with us and just went about. But it was people that I believe in. People that I put my faith behind. Ed, you know, you've had a lot of people on Beyond Ringside. There's oh, been God, different yeah. incantations. But we all know for a fact there have been people that have begged you, begged you to be on this show. Yes. And you've been like, well, you know, you don't bring anything to it. And I'm sure they got their feelings hurt. But that's how it is. When you have, when you're, when this is your, Beyond Ringside is your baby. Yes. Correct. Okay. The Merchants of Death and To Be Determined Show are my baby. Right. Because I take pride in those, just like Tasha. Tasha has a lot of pride in the To Be Determined show. Ted is no longer around here in Alabama, but he still takes pride in what he helped establish with the underground. Correct. Anybody that goes back and looks at, at Blip TV for what you guys did, there was a difference between El Professor. Granted, yes. I was not a fan of El Professor. I was not a fan of the El Professor. But... Ted was not a fan of me, and I was not a Ted, uh, fan of Ted's, but when Ted realized what was going on, and was like, oh, I see. He's just a douchebag in real life. Well, then yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, I'm a douchebag in real life. Come on. Me? I mean, everybody knows this. Me? I'm talking about me. When you realize I was a douchebag in real life, you're like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Douchebags, we hang out. We hang out together. We smell like Massengill, so we're going to sit in this corner. <laughs> so when you take pride in something, people mistake that. People mistake it for you burying them. Hey, do me and a I don't bury anybody, but for everybody that has asked me the last two years, there's only been one person that I would just say, yes, it's join the Merchants of Death, and that's Trevor Doom Eon. Yeah. I like Doom. Let me Doom's get, a hell of a guy. Do me he a favor. Afro, though. Wait, hang on one second. Folks, we're scheduled to, we're originally scheduled to be joined by Silesia Sparks in about four, uh, right after the top of the hour break. She's got a situation that she is dealing with down here in the lower 48. She is on her way back into Canada. <laughs> I'm going to let her talk about it a little um, when she's able to make it on air. We're probably going to be bumping until around seven uh, seven thirty Eastern, six thirty Central. We're also scheduled to be joined at seven o'clock Central, eight o'clock Eastern by Giant Tiger, professional wrestling star. And I have now found, I guess, one of the most mm, off the wall names for a pro wrestling company that I have seen, and it actually threw me for a loop the first time I heard about it. I'm, I'm watching the letters ISW pop up on my screen, and I'm going, okay, Interstates Wrestling, International Superstars of Wrestling. No, it's Interspecies Wrestling. Holy freaking hell, I want to hear about this. And Giant Tiger scheduled to join us at 7 o'clock Eastern, to talk, uh, 7 o'clock Central, to um, talk about that a little bit more in depth. Okay, I just wanted to get the reset in there. As we're 13 minutes before the top of the hour, Fast Eddie Lane, Wicked Nemesis, Ted Guinness, Tasha Simone, and Mad Dog Matt Denton. Matthew, what's up, buddy? I have no idea what's up because you contacted me. In complete production <laughs> notes mode, you were like, dude, you awake or asleep? And I'm like, Busy. You're actually... <laughs> wait, wait, no, whoa, 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 whoa. You were actually doing show notes, production notes? I wasn't doing show notes, production notes. Oh, okay. I was actually well, in the middle the of doing my other show. He was getting a leg over. No, he was actually doing uh, his <sighs> other podcast. Uh, he has a very successful podcast. Tasha just paid my fucking spot, in. man. Oh, I'm so sorry, Matt. <laughs> Tasha just blew my spot, man. She knows. She knows. She can smell it a mile away. <laughs> it's more than a mile away. <laughs> oh, maybe one or two. But I'll, I'll, giant Tiger. Giant or just a clever nickname? Uh, we'll, we'll let him answer that at 7 o'clock Central. Now, let, uh, this is something you and I spoke with, I uh, spoke about um, off air for just a minute, Wick. And I'm going to lay this one out there. I don't care if you're a, a professional wrestler. I don't care if you're a boxer. I don't care if you're a mixed martial artist. 
if you are scheduled to go out in the first match of the night, the first fight of the night, or in your first round, and you try to sell a weak-ass punch, and somebody from the locker room, primarily the promoter, even if the promoter is a mark with money, doesn't come out and slam your head with a freaking steel chair, something's freaking wrong. We've all, we, we've all seen this. And there should be a lynching in the locker rooms, plural. If you are working later in the show and somebody in the opening show throws a, a GDQ tip for a clothesline. That's how infuriated I was at an opening match recently, last night. The was it Nature Boy Paulie? <laughs> Please, you actually give him credit for throw- throwing something as strong as a Q-tip. Well, I'll give him credit. I'll give him credit for popcorn sales because if you if you've ever seen this guy wrestle, it's eight minutes to the ring, seven minute promo, two minute match, seven minute promo. He's great for popcorn sales. And then no, the only th- the thing that's really good for popcorn sales is if you get a bunch of um, traditional, classic, professional, older professional wrestlers going into the nudie bar that sells popcorn. You will have a popcorn fight with about ten, fifteen, twenty wrestlers across the main stage of the strip joint. That is true. Then they're going to have. Uh, yeah, and I'm going to use the gimmick that Wicked absolutely hates me to use. Um, talk about flashback in time. There was a bar in Birmingham called Sammy's, and I was working a show with old friends of mine, Lee Peak, Dwayne The Rock, Phillips, Bill Tab, Mike. Well, Mike Jackson didn't come on this particular show because Mike was still afraid of God at that point in time in his life. Um, Randy Barber, Alan Martin. Um, a lot of, if you've watched some of the old school TBS World Championship Wrestling and you've seen a lot of the guys who were in ta- enhancement talent for TBS during the Crockett era, um, we were all running buddies at that point because we were all working together over here in Alabama and Tennessee. Well, we go to a little bar called Sammy's one night because it's somebody's birthday, mine. And next thing you know, we got half of us sitting on one side of the room, half of us sitting on the other because we'd already plotted. We had a couple of female friends who were actually on stage throughout the course of the evening. And we decided just because it was her birthday, too, we were going to give her a birthday popcorn fight. So we waited till the second song of her set when she was nude except for a G-string and heels. And we started launching popcorn back and forth at each other. And she's getting caught in the crossfire. That is mo- that is a moment that should be on you screwed YouTube or something like that. I don't know. So if you haven't lived through a moment like that where you've been in the middle of a popcorn fight with somebody who's nearly naked, you haven't lived on this planet. That's all I'm going to say. But I think it was on Cinemax last night. Hey, cool. Works for me. As long as they spell my name right, I don't give a flying rat's ass. But if you are working on a show and a somebody in the opening effing match throws a poor excuse for a punch, weaker than Stone Cold Steve Austin's after the Luthes press, and you don't rip this person when you get back to the locker room? Something's wrong. If they throw a clothesline that would make two-day-old spaghetti look strong, there's a problem in the locker room. Or you're working an outlaw show, one of the two. I've seen it happen. Or on both. Tra- I've, or both, or thank both. you. Or both. Yeah, but if somebody, but you can't handle that. If you're, if ever, if nobody knows, if nobody knows what what's wrong, who can correct it? If you're working on a show when no, where nobody's trained, then nobody knows. Now, I agree with you. If you're in a wrestling event and then it happens and somebody doesn't crawl their ass, then you have a problem. Yeah. If it well, happens, no. it if it happens like a not even a major promotion, we all know the, the if I, I, there, there's no excuse for that. Period. But oh, when no. you have guys, there was a guy, somebody on that show, Eddie, that put out who put out a thing, a, a, a Facebook status in the middle of one of those groups that says, "Who wants to wrestle tonight?" <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. No, 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 no. Okay, yeah, that's true. But that's the fact, scary. Yeah, the fact of the matter is, and they had a strong. Okay, they had everything from, "Oh my god, these people are being booked." To, "Wow, he got this person on this show." <laughs> Because there were some... Hey, the, the kids, um, the elements of wrestling, Caden, Caden, and Caden Matt. Caden Sade, yes. They're good kids. Yes, they are. tiny. Yeah, I know. They're Caden, midgets. Look, Caden Sade can go. I watched, I saw him at the IWA Deep South show uh, in a uh, trio-style tag match. Um, he and two other people, um, him, Shane Smalls, and somebody else against the Batiri. That match st- 
stole the damn show for a good reason. And that was the first time that I'd heard of Caden Sade. They had a well, seven person lucha style intergender mat elimination match last night. And Wicked, you're actually going to drop your jaw when I say this. No, don't say it. I'm good. I don't believe it. There's going to be video evidence. I don't believe it. Okay. She got kicked, she got kicked in the face. Mean she did well. She got- she got kicked in the face Friday night because she blew a spot. I know. She got knocked out. Did you hear? I heard. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. She told Tasha, me. Tasha, Tra- Tracy, <laughs> she messed the spot up. <laughs> she blew, I snorted he on snorted. air. Oh, my God. She Irish whipped her. She messed the spot up. I, Tracy Irish whipped her back and kicked her dead in her face and she knocked did. her out. Yeah. Told the ring. One, two, three. Well, you see, you did it. Oh, my God. I'm so what proud of do? her. There's 250 people, paid people. Yes. That's not including the superintendent there. There's all these people, and we all know. We all know. On those shows, there's kids out there. Like When Knox got his nose broke, the first thing I said was like, you think you want to be a wrestler? I laughed because of things like that. That's when people realize it's real. And Tracy's one of those most soft-spoken people in the yes. world. <laughs> one of the one of the softest. I've been, I've, I've been stiffed by Tracy, and I've wrestled Tracy. Tracy, I never felt... Tracy touched me, except for the slaps when it needed to be. When it was to sell the match, I got my eardrum damn near busted. Yeah, she knocked her out with with uh, with a yakuza kick. <laughs> That's so hard. It's so hard. Oh, but me, but Eddie, yeah. I'm glad I'm glad Octavia was booked on that. That's Octavia's problem. She doesn't have enough matches outside. Ted, you know this. We've ribbed Octavia. I like Octavia. Octavia's a nice girl, but she shouldn't be in the ring. She, yeah, she needs seizing. But let me go back to Eddie's original point. Eddie was, you know, if someone's not out there busting busting ass because uh, someone's throwing weak ass stuff in the middle of the ring, not only that, but that just goes to tell you that nobody in the back is watching the match ahead of them. Oh yes, sir. Which means nobody knows what has been done Thank in the you. match previously, and they're going to go out there and they're going to repeat. You know, hey, this guy threw a clo- <laughs> this guy threw three power bombs, but no one saw it. So let's go out in the next match and throw three, three power, power bombs, bombs and then have a moon salt. I was clapping. If I know. Wondered. But Eddie, were you embarrassed to be there? If you were not embarrassed to be there, then it was a hit. Okay. If, if, because we've all been there. We were like, I can't believe I'm working the show. Oh the seven God. person intergender luchador ma- or lucha style match, I actually sat back and applauded because everybody in that ring, even her, gave a great account of themselves. She was better than normal. And you know me. I would call a spade a spade any day of the week on that. If I, if I think somebody sucks, I'm going to sit back and say, they didn't have a banner performance. She was actually, um, she showed improvement last night over the last time I saw her in the ring, and I'll leave it at that. And who um, was she in the ring with, really uh, quick? Hold on. Do I have my notebook around here? Yeah. Because I know, I know she's had some, di- like, she wrestled against, uh, Johnny six Slaughter guys. at ACW. Sir? It was six guys and an Octavia. Don't that's say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. They're bad. Bad, bad wicked. Bad wicked. <laughs> now I will say. Now, I'm going to say this, and I, I'm, I'm going to. This is a straight shoot from the hip. There were some good matches on the show last night, and the promoter Kevin Brannon, and I'm talking about the LXW show from last night in Sylacauga, Alabama, and to and folks, please forgive me for what I'm about to say. <gasps> To the absolute ever loving piece of shit who was going around ripping down posters last night and telling people, and I'm going to say R.E. is that person's initials. I'm not even going to give them enough dignity. To, um, I'm not going to dignify them on air with their full name. Other than Randy Epperson, you're an idiot. You're a loser, and you're the one that stole money from Rick Steiner and Johnny Swinger. Don't. If anybody tells you, "Hey, I'm going to pay you. I'm going to meet you at Walmart to pay you," no, no, and he's a okay. I don't know what I'm going to say. And Eddie's being nice. I'll say his name because of the simple fact that people don't need to work for him. He's still getting bookings, and he's claiming disability. You guys know that? He's claiming disability. So he gets a disability check, and then he tries to, whenever all this happens, he's like, I'm just a spokesperson for the for these for these companies. Are you kidding me? Wait, 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 wait. The guy said, I will pay you at Walmart after the show? Yes. That's what he told that- some of the guys. That has to be the best swerve I've ever heard. And if people fall for it and not whip his ass. <laughs> yeah. But by the same time, and I will say this, Kevin openly stated the fact that he was trying to promote something along the vein of a blend of a Chikara-esque, not Chikara, but Chikara-esque style combined with $5 wrestling. He succeeded in certain areas from last night. The main event last night was called the Plunder Buffet Battle Royal to determine the new, the um, brand new and the initial LXW champion. 
Now, I will say this. Somewhere there is a golden corral crying. Because there was so much freaking food out there. And that's why it was called the Plunder Buffet. There were some people in that ring that I enjoyed watching. There were some people out there in that ring last night that I was ready to just go get a gun. And I kid you not, it would have been a fully automatic, sorry, Barry, it would have been a fully automatic assault rifle. (laughs) So, like I said, sorry, Barry, and tell Uncle Joe I said hi, too. Blow me. And But I don't talk politics on this show. Never. Nuh-uh. Not in a million years. So, there. But last night, like I said, there were some matches where I had a great time. Mabo and Tunzi were there. Uh, Mark Mabo Bowman and Two Tons Adam Coffee, And they were laying down tracks, doing some analysis for the show. Unfortunately, I guess we had a bad connection coming out of the board, going into the recording system. Because through the headset, everything was fine. So, we, I'm going to have that board put in and looked at. But I will say this. We had about 2.30, 2.40 there last night in um, Sylacauga, Alabama, and they were some great fans. Now, like I said, they got treated to everything from oh my God moments to oh my God. And that's the easy way to say it. So, Kev, I want to say thank you for including me in the show last night. I had a great time calling as far as announcing, you know, and I'm just going to take us to break on this little note. To everybody working a professional wrestling show, or if you're on mixed martial arts or boxing, if you're doing a show and you are not sure if the sound guy has your music, go ask him. And if the sound guy on the PA system and even comes back to the locker room and says, if I don't have your music or if you're not sure if I do, Please come see me now, and you don't, you're a f- idiot. And we're going to break, and we'll be back on Beyond Ringside right after this. Let's keep this thing flying. Welcome back into Beyond Ringside. Sunday night live, seven minutes after the top of the hour on the 12th of May, 2013. Something we did not do in segment number one, and I want to go ahead and do it now. We got a chance to. Uh, Wicked Nemesis will be back in just a minute. Also, want to give a very special tip of the hat to our tag team partner, um, off air behind the scenes in production mode, Mark Mabo Bowman. Uh, Mark just let us know that we're going to go and reschedule uh, Silesia Sparks to come in next week. Um, she's unavoidably detained and is going to be running behind schedule, getting through customs. I'm just going to go ahead you know, and say it. Yes. You know what? I actually have something to say about that because I'm really disappointed. Fuck, fuckity, fuck, fuck, fuck. I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> I knew you were going to do it. Matt, 85% of the credit for that. He's Yeah, 85%. There you go. However. At least I had the balls to do it. Well, you got the jump on me, damn it. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't have done it because you're closer to Eddie than I am. Not really. Hold on a second. Yeah, so, really. I'm, tra- I'm trying to add. You have week. a few thousand miles of me. Oh, maybe one or two. I'm trying to remember the first, I think it was Billy Crystal, or who was it did that gimmick one time in a movie? Meanwhile, back at the ranch. Um, Eric what gimmick? Sorry, I missed it. Uh, the, oh, I just said fuck, fuckity, fuck, fuck, fuck. For the second time now, thank you. Um, you know something? If I had a nickel for every time someone stole something from me, I'd have 10 cents. <laughs> and how many lines of mine have you purgatoried over the line? <laughs> yeah, but the difference between you and me is that I actually made them sound good. Welcome to the conversation. Oh, oh Lord. <laughs> Damn it, I had a t-shirt planned. It's okay. I think I've got the sign still here at the back at the studios. It's, uh, that one in loud noises. Somebody actually, you, uh, Jake Cole actually used that. Oh, in no, a, you didn't say that name, did you? I didn't say out of control, Jake Cole. No, no. However, started using, um, uh, started using your loud noises gimmick, Ted. Oh, my Brick God. Brick Tamlin. Shh. Loud gonna... noises. Lamp. I like lamp. Did you do you like the lamp, or are you just saying it because it's there? I like <laughs> lamp. I have no idea what we're yelling about. <laughs> I need to get in touch with mm, Cause and Effect and delight. see if they'll bring back Louder Little Girl one time. Yep. That's all. <laughs> May 26th, the, the original Brick, Tam- Brick Tamlin on Arrested Development will be back. Arrested cool. Development, everybody. Woohoo! You know... Um, we're making a reference real quick and a couple of things and I don't, um, whoever would like to chime in on this, you're more than welcome to. Um, but we did not get a chance. To, we did not do this at the show open. So I would like to say to all of those who do fall into the category one way or the other, 
Happy Mother's Day. Um, hope it's been a great day all the way across the board. And if your kids are old enough to do something and they didn't do something, throttle them. Plain and simple. Um, I mean, hell, I even took my daughter out to buy a gift for my ex-wife. Now that's class. That's cool. I, no, I want to actually be able to see her. <laughs> Not my ex-wife, my daughter. Oh, okay. I was about to say, there's too many lines that you could actually work through right there. Um, but, you know, to mothers all the way across and around, congratulations, happy Mother's Day. And one of these days, well, I would say that there should be actually a National Kids Day in addition to National Mother's Day and Father's Day. But, you know, something kids kind of get their way just about every other day out of the year so there should be at least one day that the parents can have all to themselves and kids i do mean that parents should have it all to their effing selves hmm so if you get a babysitter like i had to deal with when i was an itty bitty brat guess what you learn to live with it every once in a while especially oh, so that was last weekend right pretty much okay pretty much so God, I miss ripping on you dude it's perfectly cool See, and then there's a world of difference between actually being able to say something and trying to interpret what you see on Facebook and or Twitter. So that's why it's like I enjoy the interaction that we have here on this show. And it's not like we're talking into a complete chasm or a wide open spaces or an abyss. Speaking of abyss, that was the worst segue I've done in the last five effing years. Oh, wow. That was terrible. <laughs> I know. The one that I had. I actually intended for it to be that damn horrible, even though it wasn't that damn predictable. The segue, can we throw that segue right into the abyss? Yes, we can. Speaking of, of course, the return of Abyss this past Thursday night on Impact, which actually I was pretty damn glad to see Abyss back. And they, even though technically he was back and, of course, got the huge pop, he was looking more like the monster that everybody knows and loves and remembers from being a major ass-kicking force in Impact Wrestling. Except not really, because if you look at it more closely, he barely got his leg up halfway for big boots. He didn't hit a really good black hole sound like we know he can do. Of course. And that's just me just crapping all over it, though, because no. it's TNA and because it's the cool thing to do. I'm one of the cool kids. Yay me. Well, see, I don't think you're crapping Shoot on it. because now. I don't think you're crapping on it. I think you're telling the truth. There is a difference between telling the truth about something as you see it and just ultimately just taking an S on it for the right and wrong reasons. So, I mean... I, sorry, Eddie. No, go ahead. One thing that I would have done differently is ditch that annoying bong, bong entrance theme that's reminiscent of The Undertaker's. I want the Give old Abyss back. Give him back the old one. Yes. Well, um, you know, I mean, this, this is Abyss we're talking about, so he's like, he's like the king of gimmick infringement. You know, when I first saw when I first saw Abyss, I was like, "Oh, they just have a fatter version of Kane," or man which, is, which essentially he is. So, I mean, if he's if he, I mean, you know, if you're going to steal something, you might as well call, call out. Except K- uh, Kane was a burn victim. Abyss wasn't. Hold on, Tasha. Just because he's. A... Sorry, go ahead, Tasha. My apologies. I was just saying, I thought he was a real of mankind. Not a matter. That's what I thought. Yeah, that. That, that's what he most was, people. He was say. mankind, and he was mankind, and came because remember he was also in a mental institution under James uh, Mitchell. Yes, yeah, James but that Mitchell was like, later on in his. No, in but his they had game. hinted at that when he very first got into TNA. I do believe they mentioned that, and then they were just like, "Well, we're just going to ignore it." If anybody remembers, James Mitchell at that time was going through this very. He's already a Satanist, like a very known Satanist. Believes worship Satan, believes that you know God is is off his throne, etc. <clears throat> James James Mitchell really was a Satanist, and that's when his character took that turn. When he started uh, with Mortis, with Hugh Morris, that's when he started incorporating more of the Satanism, more of the occultish talk, uh, more of the Anton LaVey-esque type um, managerial style right. of you know uh, beating on. And they talked about it when he first got in there, and that's what he was compared to. He's like, well, they took mankind and they took Kane and combined them together, which is a hell of a comparison, because think about it. Nobody knew who the hell he was, and here he is. He was the monster. But we all know that with big guys like that, eventually, there's only so much you can do with them without being like, they're unstoppable. Right. So, and- sorry, I'm just going to have to just bust you out on that one, because James Mitchell wasn't involved with Abyss until 2005. Yeah, wasn't that the whole Dr. Stevie gimmick? No, no uh, Doctor Stevie was later on. Yeah. That, back back then in TNA, um, 
James Mitchell took control of Abyss, made him uh, an unstoppable monster because at that time Abyss had a fear of barbed wire. Feuded with Sabu that when the Raven. This. No, no. Actually, around then, yeah. A the little house bit of whatever it was, I'm sorry. The House of... Uh, the Clockwork... Um, it, the, 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 Clockwork the, Orange House of Fun. Yeah, that's it. Okay. okay. I think Which Abyss I and Raven actually fought in that match. It was Monster's Ball. Hey, Matt, you all understand something one day when you get older? Marijuana fixed the memory. <laughs> I can't even remember yeah, my first match. I'm it, straight it, edge. It actually I helps mine. <laughs> I can... I, look, I barely remember what happened Saturday night. <laughs> or what happened Friday night in, in our matches, much less what happened in Abyss's career. No, I understand that. It's just the fact but that yeah, I'm that's a pedantic cool. prick. <laughs> that's why you're here. That's why you're here. That's why you're here, sir, and that's why we need you on To Be Determined Show. Because, because of just reasons like that. DNA. And just to bore you even more, it, 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 that whole thing was just a massive crap storm to begin with because eventually James Mitchell was revealed as Abyss's daddy. Which really pissed me off because that was too much of a parallel and paradox for Paul Bearer and Kane and Undertaker and all that other stuff. It's like, look, and that's why I kept, ex- I keep expecting the, um, Bubba, Bully and Brooke and, uh, Terry Belay gimmick to start really just going the way of the, um, Triple H. The McMahon Helmsley era. Um, I'm trying to, th- yeah, the McMahon Helmsley era, but yeah, I was trying to think about the, other, um, the, the Alliance thing. Where, where, Are bullet, you where the invasion? Yeah, kind of like yeah, the alliance thing. I mean, oh, no, no, I mean, no, I mean, no. that's because you don't, you don't have, uh, you don't have a, a rogue company coming in to take over. You have I, how many rogue. aces and eights are XWWE talent? Mostly, but they, they, the only people who are not XWWE are Wes Briscoe and Garrett Bischoff, right? And they're just green as goose shit anyway. Yeah, pretty much. And they're not being portrayed as a, as a former company. They're just being portrayed as a bunch of bikers that kick people's asses. I love Ali Doll's comment. Kane and Mankind had a baby, and it was abyss. <laughs> I would hate to see the bed that hold that, that that held that action. Oh my god! I'm just trying. To, that just gave me a mental picture in my mind of wow. a, of a, of, a, of a black diaper abyss. <laughs> <laughs> with a pacifier. Also on Cinemax last night. <laughs> and you've got and you've got a mobile dangling above the baby crib with little chainsaws and pickaxes and barbed wire baseball bats. <laughs> Most of which were used in the uh, SM, uh, S&M session between much. Kane and mankind. Pretty much. <laughs> okay, okay, look. I'm just going to hell. For the next 13 minutes, the language restrictions are off, okay? Oh the the next God. 13 minutes. Fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> Except for the gratuitous bullshit, no. Denton. Oh right now, everybody's tuning out. Everybody's like, oh, we okay, want to hear this. Okay. We'll turn to, to, to be, be determined, determined on Wednesday and, night. And okay. okay, no, language restrictions are off, but I just really wanted to say I have the most warped fucking imagination of humankind, and I just have all these little mental pictures like that dangling above me right now. It's like, and I'm trying to listen to see what the music would have been, and the only thing that really pops into my head was the old Friday the Thirteenth theme song with the, while the while the baby mobile's going around baby abyss? I don't but, know. But who's pouring people? the candle wax? I'm sorry, we have an uh, executive decision by producer Mabo. Please stop Eddie from talking. He has no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> Tell us something we don't know. And your point okay. is, hey, hey, I'm, don't shoot the messenger. Our executive producer also knows for a fact that I'm not lying about broadcasting from a bubble bath tonight. He said only with photographic evidence would he believe it, and it is on Twitter. Oh, shit. Hold on. Shit. Uh, Tasha, what have you done? The rest of the show is just going to be Eddie going... (laughs) 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 You sick bastards. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Wicked, you were about to say? I said, if I wanted to see Reba McIntyre in a bubble bath, I would watch Malibu County. Wow. <laughs> you had to get on Reba, didn't you? Damn you. <laughs> Let me tell you right now something. <laughs> you had to get on Reba, didn't you? <laughs> She's the one who came out with my favorite song, Turn On The Radio, Plain and Simple. <laughs> Call, text, okay. Twitter, me, text me, your blingers, finger, fuck, it's got I've lost my mind. <laughs> Meanwhile, back wow. at the range. You know we've got a pay-per-view from WWE coming up next week and nobody actually gives a damn? Oh, well, well I, want to, 
I want to say this really, really quick, guys. Wrestling has bored us so much over the last two weeks. We're talking about Reba McIntyre, something I want you to know nothing about. You're talking oh, about hot redheads. Okay, you're, you're talking about hot redheads and bubble baths. Hello. Hot. We could talk about MMA. I went to the fights last night. Really? Where were they? <laughs> Did anybody break their toe? Nobody <laughs> broke their toe. But Derek ah, Anderson hit a so hard in the face that he busted both of his cheekbones open under 30 seconds into the first round and the fight was stopped. Eric Anders? Yeah. Now, wow. He, what, so they ended up, what, uh, he lost by referee stoppage? Well, they called it a TKO, but yeah, that's what it was. Okay. Well, TKO. That's, yeah, because I, that would actually be Eric's, I think, second <laughs> Real loss as an amateur because um, I've watched Eric Anders fight a number of times, uh, whether it be for strike hard promotions or Sport Fight X. And um, normally, when Eric steps into the octa into the cage, that he has got it going on. And for our friends in the home state of Alabama, I am referring to yes, Eric Anders, formerly part of a national championship squad for the University of Alabama, who has turned mixed martial artist, and the kid has made a lot of progress. What round was that in, Tasha? I, I will say this about Eric. He fought, um, the guy that he fought for the title, um, he had to, the guy quit the fight because he blew his knee in the first round. I mean, he made it through the first round. I am anxious to see Paul and Eric fight again, but the difference between seeing this kid from February to now is incredible. He is trimmed up. His striking is 200%. Better. Who, Eric? Or? He walked. Eric Anders. Yeah. He he walked into the ring or into the cage, and he was all business. He wasn't there to dance. He wasn't there to pop around like a little Mexican jumping bean. The bell rang, and he was ready. And it was it was very impressive. All of the fights were impressive last night, but I knew that you would know who Eric was, so oh, yeah. he was the first one that I threw out there. Well, there's the all the matches. If anybody ever needs wants to see a great, great MMA card that's not UFC, check out V3. They are phenomenal. Yes. Uh, you can find them online at v3fights.com, and they always have a listing of where they're going to be. Um, there are some great MMA companies, and there's some on the horizon. Uh, Jason Sanderson promotes out of the Huntsville market, Huntsville, Alabama. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of the company, and Jason, I'm so sorry that I can't remember it right off the top of my head. They just recently had an outing in Huntsville at the Von Braun, and from what everybody told me, and I mean everybody who I know that went to that event, they said it was great. The fights were good all the way from start to finish. You had different styles of fighters. And that's one thing that I genuinely appreciate when a promoter and a booker for a mixed martial arts card, regardless of the weight class, tries to make it a variable as far as style of fighting. Mm -hmm. If you, if you have two pure strikers going at each other, that's not going to show anything other than a modified boxing match. But if you've got somebody who has a great ground game taking on somebody who has a great stand-up game, then it's really going to be a good chess match to see exactly who can get the upper hand in the situation. Is the striker going to be able to make um go for the knockout and pull what they do best? Is the per is the traditional wrestler going to be able to get the striker down and turn him into a human pretzel? And it's when you have promoters who think that far in advance, who have that kind of foresight for the fights. That's when you have people who go and pay their hard earned money. They're in that, my favorite phrase again, those who pay their hard earned money to see a show come back saying that they got their money's worth. Do you remember, exactly. do you remember any other fighters from last night? Um, yeah, one of them in particular, I'm sure everybody will know, Lua and Lawrence. Lua is their, um, their former lightweight champion, middleweight, yeah. I think. Um, this kid, if you haven't heard of him, look him up. He's from Louisiana. He's 19 years old. I need everybody to understand this. This kid is 19. He has a record of 17 and 4 now. But at 19 with a record of 17 wins and 4 losses, this kid's only going to get better. He this, is going to be a beast. I don't take anybody serious that can't go in and buy their own beer. <laughs> you know, I think if he went to buy his own beer, nobody would argue with him. I probably wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> but, but seriously, this kid had a very strong first round. 
came out okay in the second round, but was just overwhelmed with strikes, even on the ground, from Martin. And then after that, in the third round, he came out, or Lawrence, I mean, and Lawrence came out banging in the, in the third round. This kid does not have any quit. And I have to reiterate, this is a 19-year-old kid, and when he started banging on Lua again, he was trying to get up in his corner finally threw in the towel because they were afraid of head damage. He's still Amy, okay. right? Uh, hold on for one second. So Martin Lawrence wrestled last night? No. Or fought last night? Uh, look. I, I had the wrong last name, all right? Oh, don't, I was like, Martin and Lawrence? I was like, holy crap, where's Gina? Where's Shanae? <laughs> oh, my God, you're great. But seriously, all of the matches were just absolutely freaking amazing. I was very pleased. And what was the um, name of the promotion? So, F out of, uh, they're based out of Jackson. D3 is actually based out of Memphis. An innovative, innovative cage fighting that's based out of Jackson is also a phenomenal group. Most of the fighters for these two companies are like one step away from going pro. I mean, they're solid. Now, you said the kid was 19 years old with a record of what? 17, well, 17 and 3 going into the fight, 17 and 4 now. Okay, that scares me because most most states won't let you fight unless you're 18. And if this kid's had that many Amy bouts in two years uh somebody's fudging paperwork there because there's i mean legitimately because most states will make you Tennessee's wait he's not one of them i don't think to be honest with you uh tim i need to like wrestling you know there's some places you can't wrestle but in alabama you can wrestle at 14 you can get true. wrestle 14 true and that's one of the things. Seventeen and four, but seventeen and four is impressive. Anyway, look, I don't give a crap how old he is. If he was in the fourteen fighting men, that makes it even more impressive. So shh, let's let's keep it between us and our five thousand listeners. 5, nobody rat the kid out. Okay. Kid, nobody check. It's just like Obama. He was born in Hawaii. Sure. <laughs> I'll tell you this much. If anybody rats out, we'll send Jake Cole after you. <laughs> That's, that's out of control. That's that's burning up, dude. Plain and simple. You took out of control before I could say it. I got stuck with the other nickname. He needs a third nickname that somebody else can jump on. It's no. better than flaming. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> the flaming the flaming lips, J. Cole. Reminds me of Okay, a right punk now band. right now our three lesbian listeners are like, Yeah. There you go. Thank you. Good one. No, um, seriously, though, and this is something that we have said on this show for a long time, and oh, wait a minute, I got an email the other day, and we are probably going to be trying to set up, God, I hope this can happen after the move, that way I'm not crunched for time, yes, we're getting ready to move the studios, um, I received a very cool email, yeah, it's rare with you, you can use the words cool and email in the same sentence, uh, from the agent, who is actually a good friend of mine, for Dan the Beast Severn. So we might actually, um, we're trying to work everything out to get Dan set. Mabel, if you're listening, I've got this under control. Um, <laughs> Mabel better be on, the, if Mabel's <laughs> not it. in this interview, I'm not going to do it. What, with Dan Severn? Yes. No, no, Are you no, 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 me? no. Let's be honest here, we're not interviewing Dan Severn. Yes, we are. We're we doing are his mustache. Dan Severn's mustache. mustache. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, because what was one of the questions we've used in the lightning round for the longest time is like, what's more dangerous or what, um, you know, what's the worst proposition? I think the first one that oh, I came up with the lightning round was, what would you rather do? Um, box an octopus or shoot fight Dan Severn's mustache? Dan, Dan Severn's mustache is undefeated in uh, the uh, lightning round. Yeah, in the lightning. No, 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 no. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. Mabo's going to have to clarify that one because there was an interview that we did, and I'm trying to remember who it was, where Mabo brought up the question and gave the option, and the person took the other option, or took Dan Severn's mustache. So I'm trying well, that to... that person's foolish. I'm trying Come to... Oh, my God. I don't... Um, Mabo, you're going to have to correct me. I, I'm, I'm trying to remember if it was uh, Ryan Cruz or Darren Corbin, but it was somebody in that timeline that actually said they would rather shoot fight Dan Severn's mustache than take the other option. So Dan Severn's mustache did suffer one loss in the lightning round. Are Except you sure they weren't... In, in, in reality, it never loses. Come on. It, it, never, Come on, it never does. Don't horseshit me now. Now, now. I can tell when you're horseshit. Okay, Matt. Your lips move. <laughs> <laughs> Professor X. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Awkward silence. 
<laughs> no, but see, you're coming back to it. This is something that we preached on this show for a long time. And it doesn't just pertain to the world of professional wrestling. It also pertains to mixed martial arts and other sports. Number one, get your ass away from the television. Take a look around because there are some quality promotions in wrestling, mixed martial arts, boxing, in other sports. Hell, Birmingham even has a great roller derby team, the Tragic City Rollers. Yeah. And actually, I was in touch with the uh, publicist for TCR earlier this season. And we were, yeah, we were supposed to actually have a couple of the girls from Tragic City Rollers, Birmingham's Roller Derby Queens. Uh, matter of fact, <laughs> excuse me. Let, me, let me make sure my pink Floyd shirt looks nice real quick. There you go. I got the, I got the Led Zeppelin shirt ready to rock. <clears throat> but in all sincerity, yeah, I mean, so if you get it, if you get the opportunity and granted, especially with Bellator putting out a great product, still you owe it to yourself to get the hell away from the television set. I mean, to the 17 people who actually made it to Birmingham's Bowel Auditorium to catch the TNA show this past Friday night, I commend you for getting out on a Friday night to go check out a show. To the 200 plus who made it out to Tarrant High School to catch Global Championship Wrestling, I commend you. To the 200 plus who came out last night to Silicaga to catch LXW, I commend you. To those who made it up to the show that Tasha was talking about, the mixed martial arts show in Tennessee last night, thank you. Man, I felt bad for TNA. I'm not. Even, I'm not even gonna lie. For one time in my in my existence, I, I felt bad for a wrestling company. I feel bad for those guys. I okay. really feel bad for those guys. I don't feel bad for the company. I feel bad for those who are in their in the ring, busting their asses every time that the doors open. I feel yeah, bad. Yeah, but it's one thing to, but it's Eddie. It's one thing to go out and wrestle in front of thirty people, knowing you're going to get five dollars or a hot dog and some chips. It's another thing to know you wrestle for a major promotion and there's forty people in the audience. Yeah, but when this major promotion not only jacks around the ticket prices, but also jerks around the paychecks of the talent. I mean, mm. I, I only have... Yeah, I went there. I mean, shoot, bottom of the hour break. Folks, tell you what, we're taking the bottom of the hour break. We're going to be back in five. We'll be on Ringside Live. Hang tight. And we're going to pick this up right after this. And we're back on Beyond Ringside Live. Fast Steady Lane. The Wicked Nemesis, Ted Guinness, Mad Dog, Matt Denton, Tasha's Simone had to dive off for a little while. I think she's still in her bubble bath. Damn it. Scheduled to be joined in about 25 minutes by professional wrestling star Giant Tiger right here on Beyond Ringside. Um, we did set everything up to where Silesia Sparks is going to be joining us next Sunday here on Beyond Ringside. Um, for our friends in the central Alabama area, I want to remind everybody that Buffalo Wild Wings in Trustful is going to be showing the Extreme Rules pay-per-view. It is free to get in, come early, come hungry, and for those of us 21 and over who are not straight edge, buy a damn beer. And for you people who just want to sit there and eat six wings and drink water, I'll be the first one to walk up and kick your ass. Plain and simple. I will hire Wicked Nemesis to come in. I'll pay him 20 bucks just to punch you in the mouth. Plain and damn simple. I'm that, I will. I'm that nice about it. And, of course, I know Wicked Nemesis. He'll charge me 20 bucks per person that he pops in the mouth. So uh, I'll, go broke yeah, of course. That, I'll go broke that day, but you know something? I'll be happy. I'll tell you what. Go do Corey for free. Oh, oh God! Yeah, he'll punch Corey in the mouth for free. Yeah, most people we know would. Oh, I knew. Well, well, I'm just gonna stand here and take it because I deserve it. Can I rape your mom? Like, whoa, Corey! Whoa. It's Mother's Day. Oh wow! <laughs> Holy <laughs> nutmeg! That's my rage. I feel like That's I should be doing. Rage. I like oh, Corey. Shit. I consider Corey friend. That's why I get so mad at him. But Ted, you got to go. I'm sorry, sir. Yeah, I got to duck out. Five a.m. is coming. Ooh. And it's the first time I've seen 5 a.m. on purpose in quite a long time. I'm but sorry. I have good news for everybody. Yes, the chafing has healed. Rubbing Me Raw will return this Wednesday on the TBD show. Oh, my. And it's uh, been <laughs> building up. Pent up frustration will be released. And I know Wicked Nemesis. To the climax. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so grab your, grab your Vaseline and sense of lotion. This Wednesday, Rubbing Me Raw will return. You can find me on Twitter, at Ted Guinness. You can find me on Facebook on my like page, The Voice, Ted Guinness. Keep going. I, I just love it. 
Uh, <laughs> and I will just, I'm just going to throw this out there right now. In two weeks, I will not be able to be on Beyond Ringside. I have a unfortunate, well, I don't know if it's an unfortunate. I have a prior commitment in two weeks. His blow up doll comes in from Amazon. What's that? His blow up doll comes in from Amazon. Well, it did better. I have to be here to sign for it. There you go. <laughs> you know, rubbing me raw is a lot like concrete mix. You know, you get it just a little wet, take a step back, and then watch it get rock hard. And uh, on that note... Zombie Rick Rude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, gentlemen, I wish you a fond adieu. Have a good show, and I will talk to you guys next week. Take care, Tedrick. We'll see you then, buddy. All right. The voice, Ted Guinness, ladies and gentlemen. You know, we were covering, uh, we were hitting on a number of different cylinders before the commercial break, and there's times when I really hate to take that bottom of the, or the top of the hour break, um, especially when we're in free form like this, but mainly due to the fact we keep the continuity in play because there's, um, there's some stuff behind the scenes every once in a while that we do take care of as far as the network itself goes. And for those of you listening on Ustream, thank you very much. Um, I'm going to ask everybody to keep their eyes open on .com and the social sites for Beyond Ringside over the next couple of weeks because it's going to be a kind of a tumultuous run. Um, I made the statement during the opening that we're going to be moving the studio, and I'm not sure how long the studio itself is going to be down. I'm hoping no more than a week. And Matt Denton has been kind enough to be able to um, to offer to be able to step up and do production for both To Be Determined and Beyond Ringside in situations where I'm not able to from um, from this studio. So, like I said, if things work out, we'll probably be down here at the studio once, try to get into the new location. We'll probably lose about a week. Um, we may end up going back to Ustream for a couple of weeks. Um, it just all depends on the way everything works out. And I'll tell everybody about that. I'll tell the rest of the cast about that off air. But like I said, as it goes right now, just keep your eyes open because we're going to do everything we can. We're, um, next week, maybe. Um, we're trying to work on the logistics because we want to try to do the show from Buffalo Wild Wings in Charlottesville before Extreme Rules. But um, we're batting 500 on that prospect. And I want to give Dino and everybody at B-Dubs in Charlottesville a huge tip of the hat because they have been very kind, very professional, and very courteous um, in the way that the, everything has been handled. Um, from the first time, the second time, um, the Mania broadcast we had a lot of fun with. Um, I figured out, and it was operator error, Matt, on that first show, but the second show actually went out the way it was supposed to. Um, the first show was going out where you could hear everything from behind the scenes, including me having a damn fit, <laughs> which was mm. funny as freaking hell. Because <laughs> I went back and listened, and then I deleted the bitch <laughs> and put up the right version. Oh, come on. Now, there's some stuff, that, you know, it's like, you don't always want to kill the curtain factor, but still... Um, I do you should just send it to, just to me so I can use it oh, to blackmail you, you know? There, you know is how no, it's. there is no blackmailing me. I don't care if I commit the most heinous act in history. I don't care if I get caught. Well, like... I have been. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Say what? I've been contacted by uh, Crew Jones asking when his uh, To Be Determined show for April 24th will be up. I told him I have no idea. So. I will have that up this week, guaranteed. He was he was upset that Zombie Rick Rude was up before he was. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, uh, I, okay, one of the things oh, also, I, for, for those who watch the Ustream side or pay attention on Ustream Mobile, um, I had been trying to work on different slideshow presentations since we can't do full motion video on Ustream right now because of limitations. I mean, I'm in, I'm in central South Alabama and Wicked Nemesis is over in eastern central Alabama. Matt Denton is over in the UK. Tasha Simone's in Tennessee. And refuses to get on webcam. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, Ted Guinness is up in Idaho and Mabo, of course, is on Gilligan's Island. So you've got all the different independent variables involved where trying to do like live um, full video would be an impossibility. So in order, I, but right now I've kind of kept one slide up there for this broadcast. So if you're looking at your phone going, you yeah, know, that picture hadn't changed in 30 minutes and it might change in a few minutes. I haven't decided yet because I'm not running a full slideshow. Well, for BR and TBD, I try to do something different and try to create a slideshow presentation for Ustream. And we put that on YouTube. And I've just, with my work schedule, I, and this is a, this is straight shoot. With my work schedule, I've just fallen so far behind that I haven't been able to get everything done that I want to get done. And Wicked knows, Mabo knows, Ted, Tasha, uh, Matt, they all know that I'm an anal retentive son of a bitch when it comes to being a perfectionist. 
It has to be right, or I don't sign off on it. And I just wasn't happy with the way certain things were um, working out here in the studio. And But I'm going to go back to the basics as far as the audio podcast, and I will have the episode with Crew Jones up um, hopefully within the next 48 hours. I got a ton of packing to do and starting to go through stuff, but I will get that done. You have a guarantee on that. So, Wick, there's your answer. And I don't know if I made any sense whatsoever, but I am running for Supreme Court justice soon because once you get a justice in there, you can't get their ass off the bench. Shades of Harry Stone from Night Court, if y'all remember that television show. Oh, yeah. Still one of my favorite shows of all time. Found season one for five bucks at Wally World. So I had to give the Evil Empire five more bucks plus sales tax. Um, I made the reference earlier that WWE has a pay-per-view coming up this um, this coming Sunday, Extreme Rules. They do? Yes. And legitimately speaking, I have been watching the Twitterverse. I've been watching Facebook. I've been watching some of the message boards. Is there a post-WrestleMania pay-per-view that has gotten less fan interest ever other than this one? Denton? Um, hmm. It's a tough one. Because I'm kind of... Well, actually, no, that's a lie. I'm not hyped up for it at all. And most of it's because of Triple H, because the one thing that I want to see was Brock Lesnar kick Triple H's ass again. But after Monday night, and Triple H refusing once again to be a play a vulnerable character by completely no-selling the fact that Brock Lesnar just wrecked his office... Triple H has just killed my enthusiasm for that match completely. Because you know what's going to happen. I know what's going to happen. The Wolf knows what's going to happen. And, ugh, boring. In this case, actually, I'm going to argue because I think in this particular circumstance, Brock goes over. Wick, agree or disagree? I'd hope so. Uh, yeah, he better. Well, I mean, remember, um, Triple H took the win at Mania, of course, which is the last stand for the badass Triple H, and you've got the steel cage match coming up. Brock Lesnar's ripped the office apart, or the corporate office apart, and Triple H, as Matt so beautifully said, no sold it. I've got two offices, and you'll see me in this office soon. <laughs> whoop de damn to do But I'll ask you the same question. Have you seen a post-WrestleMania pay-per-view that has less fan interest going at this point in time other than this one? Absolutely not, not not one that I can remember in my uh, short term memory loss. <laughs> Hold on, let me let me find some. I'm trying to find my phone real quick because an old friend of mine who is also Generation One here on Beyond Ringside, um, the Hitman Ryan Ad, um, Ryan Adcock, he asked me point blank, and I'm going to try to find his text message real quick because I want to do what he said justice. Um, but if there has been one storyline build toward a pay-per-view that has been completely blown worse than Ryback Cena, I don't know what it is. It's pretty. I can't find his text, but that's pretty much what he said. He's like, you had the great, you had the greatest possibility for Ryback to be the pure heel in a circumstance, or at least be the really pissed off ex-best friend, not the bitter bitch is the way he put it. And Ryback came across in that first promo, this is something that I've not said up until recently, and up until now, and I agree with um, Hitman on this one big time. That first promo that Ryback cut was absolutely horrible. He went from being power face to bitter bitch in five minutes or was that, less. Was that the one with the uh, the flashback that was kind of yes. reminiscent of... Yeah, yes. Right, right, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean... And if they would have played this right, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm not saying that I had the perfect answer for it. I would have basically had Ryback come down. If they don't want to go and turn him completely heel, if they want to keep something there the fa that can keep T-shirt sales going, they could have had him come down after the gim after the clothesline or after the gimmick to Cena. The next week, they could have had him come down, look Cena straight in the face, and go point blank. I got screwed by the shield. I got screwed by Brad Maddox. I got screwed by CM Punk. I got screwed by Paul Heyman. I know you will give me a fight. I challenge you for the belt. Let's fight. I'd have been perfectly happy with that. Wick, your thoughts? Uh, no, he needs a manager. 
Well, true. That's it. But if they're not going to give him... He shouldn't, have said, he shouldn't have said anything. Why does he have to go out and explain himself? He should have just went out and just started beating on Cena. Not said anything. Just ran to the ring and started beating his ass. Well, see, I laid that out there in the way that I did in case they didn't or, want to turn him completely uh, heel. Yes, sir. Or or they could or they could have had him do like Big Show because, you know, since people don't remember, had him rip through the ring and pull Cena down. Yeah. And then them started fighting or something, you know, or, or have him crawl out and leave Cena there. Yeah, but that was kind of done already, like, in recent memory, so I don't think they would have gone to well again with that one. They've done when was it done in recent memory? I'm sorry. Oh. Uh, Kane. When oh, Kane okay. came back. Well, he shouldn't have said anything. He should have went in the ring and started beating the crap out of, out of Cena. But, but I agree with Eddie. That, that whole uh, Ryback power face to bitch in five minutes thing. One thing that I will I have said from the beginning. That it's because really of what he said, though, Matt. It's not the fact he went uh, out there. It's because of what he chose to say. Right. Oh, no, 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 no. Because he no, shouldn't no, no. be talking. Yes, sir. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back, back to when Ryback was squashing jobbers. He said, "Feed me three. The shield were three, and now he can't take three. Come on." Well, there's a difference between three enhancement talent uh, workers and Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins, and Roman Reigns. I mean, look. Oh yeah, but I'm just, I'm just saying the fact that he said, "Feed me three or feed me shield." Is- no, because look, the, look, a real manager, <clears throat> excuse me, a real manager would have went back and been like, okay, let's see what he's done, because this is the promo that everybody needs. This is the promo that everybody's going to be talking about. Okay, that's what a real manager does. Thank a real you. manager knows when you can go in and play with the fans, and then when it's time for business. When you have, when something like that, that's the stage for a real manager to take control and be like, we used to say, feed me three. The Shield, you're the three, but not here, not now. Because you guys mean nothing compared to the championship. Who cares about three guys? Who cares about them? It's all about Cena. But nobody does that because nobody uses real managers. Zeb Coulter's only half of what he used to be. Well, Zeb Coulter's never really been a manager manager. I mean, Dutch Mantel is probably one of the best talents and one of the most underrated talents on a national scale of all time. And yes, I put a qualifier on that because you have to. I mean, for those in the southeastern United States in particular who remember when Dutch Mantel tore through this area with Shoe Baby and was one of the most controversially and talked about heels in professional wrestling for a number of years. And then unfortunately, when he went to Crockett, as part of the Kansas Jayhawks with, um, with, I believe it was, uh, Bobby Jaggers, yeah. And they made it mid-card status at best. Bobby Jaggers was a damn good heel. Dutch Mantell was a damn good heel. Dutch Mantell on the, Zeb Coulter on the microphone has been gold for the most part. And if not gold, platinum. I will take it to the next level. But. Yeah, but look at Paul Heyman. Look at Paul Heyman's man- managerial style. He's constantly in there, even with Brock Lesnar, a man who was a UFC champion, a yep. man who at one time was the youngest champion in WWE history, okay? Still is. He still treats him. He's, he still is? Yeah. Youngest WWE he, champion in history. No. Randy he, Orton. Gone. Yes, gone, uh, Eddie. Look. Anyways, what are you going to say, Eddie? I thought, Listen, I thought Randy took that on. The thing about it is, is that Paul Heyman... Even Paul Heyman gets in there and treats him, go low, go low. Why are you letting him out-wrestle you? That's what you have to do. I know that there's nobody that can out-wrestle Chris Knox because Chris Knox is trained MMA. Chris Knox wrestled in high school. But still, I scream at him like he has no idea what he's doing because that's a real manager. That's where it comes into effect. Ryback needs a manager, plain and simple. Not a valet. He needs a real manager. Dolph Ziggler does not need AJ. Oh, and what about Dolph Ziggler? We haven't even talked about that. I'm about to go uh, at 7 o'clock. I'm leaving. Dolph Ziggler. Having amnesia. Yeah. Retrograde amnesia, yeah. Yeah. And and this is a shoot. This is not a storyline. He is not scheduled to be on any shows for a little bit. Are they going to strip him of his title at Extreme Rules? Or are they going to do like that? Like I believe they should and make a number one contenders match instead? I think they should make a number one contenders match. 
and give him that time off. Yes. God knows they did it for Cena. They did it for Punk as well. Yeah. But this, I feel bad for Ziggler. This is his, they gave him the ball, ran with it. But everything that led up to him winning the title, all those bumps, all those bumps that, we, that we've seen him take, where we're like, he, he's folded up, he should be dead. Those are what led to this right now. I'm just that's just my opinion. No, and you're what you're dead on. I mean, you're dead solid perfect on it. Because that is something about pro wrestling, and this is something where we have said this on this show for years, dude. And you've said it recently work smarter, work hard, not harder. And there is a way to work smart in the ring and make it look like you're killing yourself without actually killing yourself. But, but Nemeth has had felt, has felt the need that he has had to prove himself above and beyond what he did the match before. And I don't blame him for that. I don't fault him for that. I give him all the credit in the world for having that mentality. Because if you don't have the mindset of going out and being better than your last match, get out. Just plain and simple. Get out. If, and everybody goes through these phases. I don't care who you are. You can be a, you can be a full-time worker. You can be a part-time wrestler. You can be the biggest star. You can be a complete no-name. You can be a referee, a manager, an announcer, a commissioner. You're going to have down times. And that's understandable. Everybody has personal BS. Everybody has personal lives. Everybody has personal issues. You also have health issues. And if you are at a point where your body is coming apart, stop. Not get out. Stop. Because it doesn't matter. You can be knocking down seven figures. But if you are pushing your body past its limits and you're already broken up inside to the point where you're causing yourself permanent damage permanent injury and possibly life altering damage and injury stop take a time out assess the damage go to a qualified professional whether it be you know mental whether it be physical spiritual it doesn't matter get a real evaluation get a real checkup and full physical then if you if you really want to get a second opinion the hardest phrase for anybody in pro wrestling to let sink into their skull is this business will be okay while you're out getting better. Even if you are the best person in the ring or the greatest on the microphone, this business will go on for a little while while you're out getting better. And a lot of us have a hard time with that. Wick, you know better than anybody. Mabo knows it too. It tears me up when I'm not able to get the day off to go work a Friday night show with Global. Because I want to be there. Because I enjoy doing what I do to the level that I do. You've seen me go out there with a freaking 103 fever. You, I think, matter of fact, uh, you, Sawyer, and a couple others in the locker room had found out that I had the flu one time and I actually showed up to work a show. But I was staying away from everybody. And then when y'all found out later that I was sick, or later in the night that I was sick, I believe you cussed me. It's like, what the F are you doing here? You're, you should be at home in bed right now. And maybe I should have been at home in bed. But I love this business that much, and I enjoy doing it as much as I do to work. Yeah, I'll put my body through that much more hell. Because I'm also an anorotentive son of a bitch when it comes down to the fact that I'm not sure who's going to take my place for the night. If I know it's going to be somebody that I'm that's going to do the job, uh and do it well to where the boss isn't going to yell at me later for being sick, I'm okay with it. If it's a situation where I know the boss is going to say, damn it, you needed to be there, then I'm going to feel even worse. But Wick, even, I mean, you acknowledge that fact, that there are times when you have to stop before permanent injury sets in, right? Well, what it is, is people are afraid of losing their quote unquote spot. Right. People are afraid that their momentum that they have built up can just be taken from them. 
You're supposed to have confidence in yourself. You're supposed to have confidence that you being gone a week or two, the, sh- the show would go on without you. Yeah. But there's some guys that mentally, once they slow down, they can't pick back up. You don't slow down. You never it's grow just old. Like, it's just like Derek Rose. Everybody wants Derek Rose to play. That's his body. He'll tell you when he's ready. But, guys, I've got to go. Yeah. This Wednesday, the To Be Determined show, the NWA National Champion, Damian Wayne, will be with us live, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, beyond ringside.com. Uh, I don't know if we'll have you stream. We'll see. Uh, Matt, myself, Eddie is off this week. Eddie, good luck with everything. Thank you very much. Uh, but be warned, explicit language. And to everybody <laughs> that's been joining us, we do appreciate it. Just be ready because we also have a special, someone special coming on later on in the evening. So thank you all at Wicked Nemesis, at the 2BD Show on Twitter, Facebook fan page, Wicked Nemesis, Unlucky Charms, and of course, To Be Determined Show. Thank you all, and you all have a great night. Merchants of Death fan page as well. Wicked Nemesis Enoch on YouTube. Matt, Eddie, thank you. Ted, look forward to the new Rubbing Me Raw this Wednesday. Tasha, thank you all. Damon Wayne and a special guest this Wednesday. And to all those that are checking out the last two weeks of To Be Determined Show, thank you as well. Good night, everybody. God bless America and no place else. There you go. Folks, we're going to be back at the top of the hour. And when we come back, we're going to be joined by pro wrestling star Giant Tiger right here on Beyond Ringside. Hang tight. We are cock locked and ready to rock in more ways than one. Welcome into your home for wrestling, mixed martial arts, sports talk, and a whole lot more. This is Beyond Ringside, live from the vault in the Full Range Entertainment Studios in beautiful Birmingham, Alabama. I'd like to hope, I'd like to say, hoping everybody is enjoying a great Mother's Day weekend all the way across the lower 48. Fast Eddie Lane behind the control panel. I'd like to welcome in our very special guest at this time, ladies and gentlemen, professional wrestling star, Giant Tiger in the house tonight. Tiger, how you doing tonight? Yo, 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 I'm pretty good, man. I'm pretty, pretty decent. Professional wrestling star indeed. Yeah, that's me. Now I gotta. I, I, I didn't ask this off air. Which do you prefer, Giant Tiger, Mister Tiger, or just Tiger? Um, how do you want it done? Uh, you can call me GT. Uh, you know, let's just go GT. Let's go GT. Works for me. Now, do me a favor. Um, I know that you've got a lot going on because I know that you're working with Interspecies Wrestling. You've also got Battle War. But I want to go back a little bit, if I could, for those who have not had a chance to find out exactly what makes Giant Tiger the Giant Tiger. Uh, well, wow. Uh, the name Giant Tiger um, really has zero meaning to what I am. Uh, I have a tiger mask. I guess that's basically it. Um, Giant Tiger, the name, has nothing to do with it. Um, besides, like, there's a, uh, there's a store in Canada uh, called Giant Tiger, and they sell, like, clothes and like, uh, kind of cheap stuff like that like cheap clothes and deodorant and toothpaste. And uh, I worked there for a little bit, and I think that's really where the name came from uh, because I had the mask. Uh, but, yeah, those stores are all around uh, Canada. Not in Quebec, though, just like I think Ontario, uh, where I lived for a little bit. Uh, that, yeah, that's basically the name. There's nothing really clever about it. It's actually a pretty terrible name. <laughs> now, as far as on the personal side, um There's a signature question that I always like to ask because everybody has different answers for it. There are two moments for all of us in the world of pro wrestling, as well as mixed martial arts, boxing, and other sports. The first moment is when you genuinely become a fan. And in our case right now, it'd be pro wrestling. The second moment is when the little light bulb goes off over your head and you just sit back and go, I got to do this. GT, what are those two moments for you? Uh, when I decided I'm a fan of professional wrestling, I went to a, uh, a local wrestling show in Montreal at a bar. Uh, the Fed was known as uh, IWS, International Wrestling Syndicate, and uh, seeing a live show made me a fan. I was always a fan before, like on TV and stuff like that, but uh, going to those shows made me a fan. Um I got to do this is the same answer as the first one. What made me a fan is what made me say, I got to do this. 
and uh, uh, I got to train, and I got to try to see if I can, you know, you know, get this stuff done. Um, so yeah, the the first answer is the same as the second answer. Uh, so I, I ended up uh, just going to that training school, the uh, IWS training school, and that's where it started. You know, um, on a, on a serious note, I gotta say thank you for that because a lot of the times you'll hear people who, and I, I don't fault them for this, not in the least, I really don't, because we all have different surroundings, we all have different environments that will help us grow as wrestling fans, and then for those of us who make our way into the business, or the sport, or the world of professional wrestling, um, it's a variance that everybody has because you have so many people. It's like, yeah, I saw Hulk Hogan, Ultimate Warrior. Yeah, I saw Stone Cold and The Rock. And it's like when you hear somebody say, I went to a local, I heard about a local show and went to go check it out. It's like that is one of the things that we have preached on the Beyond Ringside Radio Network ever since the inception back in the late 90s is the fact that there is so much more than what you just see on television. Now, GT, I want to ask you this. For the fans who have not had a chance to catch some of the more localized shows that take place in their hometown sometime, and they stay glued to the TV set, what do you, what would be a message from the Giant Tiger to those um, to those fans to get them to come to the shows? Well, I mean, it's completely different, right? Like you can watch something on TV, and it's it's really cool, and it's it's surreal. But once you go to a live show and you see the ring, and you're surrounded by fans that are into the show, it's completely different. It's night and day. You, you have a different appreciation for it. Um, and I mean, if I never like went to live shows and saw that stuff, I would have never taken it as seriously as I did. And I mean, I think a lot of, uh, we're all fans all the time. Like we're all kind of marks for ourselves and for other people. <laughs> and, uh, I like to think every time I go out there, like, I don't know if you, uh, looked up some of my stuff. I'm not really, um, much of a professional wrestler but when i go out the only thing i want to do is make people remember me because i know that if i was a 15 year old giant tiger sitting at a wrestling show i would remember me um i don't know if i said that properly but i think you know what i mean yeah i know exactly what you mean on that one now um who do you give credit for as far as your initial training in pro wrestling uh, like I said, I was trained um, at a wrestling company called uh, the IWS, yeah. uh, which was a pretty big company. Uh, I was trained two guys. Uh, one of them is uh, El Generico. The other guy is Beef Wellington. Uh, <laughs> I went to, went to training school with uh, Twiggy, who is also uh, a pretty, pretty well-known wrestler in this area. And that's it. I trained uh, Beef Wellington and El Generico trained us. And uh, that's basically it. Like, a lot of stuff I do in the ring and a lot of the stuff that I am is a heavy influence. It's influenced heavily by uh, Beef Wellington and the way he performed and the way he wrestled. Um, which, I mean, if you look back at my matches now and you look at it and you look over at ISW matches and you see uh, Giant Tiger versus Beef Wellington, which is a pretty important feud in uh, ISW, uh, it, was, it was a real treat because I got to wrestle... You know, one of my friends and my trainer, um, we did some really crazy stuff. So, Now, when you go against somebody who you were, per se, training alongside of or going against one of your original trainers, how much more incentive do you have to really push yourself that much harder just to show, hey, I did this and I did this the way you showed me and I took this to a different level? How much, how much pressure do you put on yourself for that? I, uh, I think a lot. I think a lot. Um, I've wrestled both of them. I've wrestled Beef and I've wrestled Generico. And, and for me, it's like, if you search Giant Tiger Wrestler on YouTube, you're going to see, and you might even be a little shocked, uh, with some of the offensive stuff that I've done. And even though, uh, and even that I'm not a wrestler. So for me to like push the envelope is to just be as entertaining as I could possibly be and just be myself. Like at the end of the day, Giant Tiger is just me. The guy with the mask on is the guy without the mask on. And whatever you see in the ring, it's, uh, you ask anybody I know, anybody that knows me, it's exactly what I'm like in my personal life, in my real life. So I just go out there and I try to be me and over the top. And uh, I just try to, you know what I mean? Uh, people yeah. end up laughing. So I guess I'm doing a pretty good job. Now, you make the reference to Giant Tiger being an extension of your personal self. How many parallels are there between the man behind the mask and giant tiger. 
Well, uh, the, the, I don't know if we can touch on this, but um, I don't know how PG your show is. But uh, basically, Giant Tiger, everything you hear with the uh, with the drug use and the uh, let's say escorts and everything you read and everything you say is is real life. Uh, that is me, or that was me. Uh, I'm sober now, uh, but uh, that is completely me. Like I never Giant Tiger was just me. It was there were some things I didn't do, like the over the top stuff, like. Let's say with Beef's dad, and yeah, you know, you kind of have to search that up if you want to figure out what that story is. Um, but it, it's all me, man. Like uh, Giant Tiger is all me. Uh, I really am that person. Um, maybe I'm a little nicer in my personal life, um, but like I said, there there really is no. Difference. If you know me, then Giant Tiger makes a lot of sense. Now, you're making a reference to the uh, series you had, the feud you had with Beef Wellington. Um, in addition to that one, what would you consider to be some of your, um, some of the programs, some of the feuds that you've had that have stuck out really in your mind? Um, definitely the one with Beef Wellington was, uh, my best, uh, my best feud. Uh, after that, I would say it would be with Twiggy. Like when Twiggy was the, uh, ISW champion. Okay. Now, there is sorry, a, sorry. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I, I thought you were continue. I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't. Um, but what I wanted to ask. One of the questions that's been coming up on our sister show to be determined on Wednesday nights by the Wicked Nemesis. At what moment did you feel that you had arrived as a professional wrestler? Uh, well, like I said, for me, it's different. I'm sure uh, wrestlers listening to this. Uh, maybe they can relate, maybe they can't relate. Um, I went out and I did an angle with Pete Wellington and I did a thing where, um, basically the, if I won, I would get to sleep with his father for 73 hours and uh, the crowd loved it and the uh, angle was very over. And I did a thing where I was in Connecticut and, uh, Again, for ISW, and I wrestled Steven the Turtle Whiner, and I, I, I'm trying to be as, as clean as possible. And after the match, I grabbed the microphone, and I was doing my promo and my thing because Eddie Kingston came out, and then I looked at a girl in the front row, and I said, man, I would love to make love to you. Basically, I didn't say that, but that's kind of what I said. Yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't say that at all, but uh, that's close to it. And then she got in the she got in the ring and I started um, she laid down and I started writing on her face oh really so you can ima- you can imagine what I said um, and it wasn't to make love to and the crowd <laughs> loved it and it's moments like that I, I didn't have one moment where it was like you know this is what's gonna define me I have many moments like that and I still get surprised when I do little things that are just so stupid and so over the top that people end up really enjoying um, and I get that a lot. I mean, almost every single time that I go out and I do something that gets a reaction, I always feel that way. Um, but I mean, the first time would be uh, Beef Wellington and what we were doing and how uh, popular it was and what it did for, you know, ISW. Now, would that qualify as the most off the wall or the craziest reaction you've ever gotten from a fan? Or is there one that you think can um, pass that one? Uh, well, I mean, the craziest reaction was uh, I wrestled uh, Sexy Eddie in a uh, alcohol brawl, and basically we both got drunk before the match uh, downstairs at the bar, and then we wrestled, and we were both very, and it wasn't even like we didn't, it wasn't fake. We were both really drunk as we were out there. And you can even watch that match online. I think it's the whole match is online for free on under the Inner Species Wrestling uh, YouTube account, alcohol brawl. And uh, basically what happened was I ripped Eddie's underwear off and he was naked. Like, he was completely nude. Uh, and he ended up, he ended, uh, he was holding, like, his junk, right? And I was down on the on the mat and he jumped on the second and did a moonsault completely naked and uh, landed on me. And that was one of the craziest reactions I've kind of gotten, even though I didn't do the move, but that I've been a part of. Uh, another time I wrestled uh, Colt Cabana at ISW. And uh, we, again, did an uh, alcohol brawl, and he doesn't really drink. So he ended up puking in the match <laughs> on the stage. 
And uh, after he beat me, I ran out and I, I, I didn't see the, the puke, so I slipped on the puke. And I was also, he ripped my underwear off, so I was nude. So I was holding my chunk and I was nude and there was puke on the stage. And Cabana was drunk and I slipped on the puke and I, I fell in Cabana's puke. Oh. And that was, that was really just like a kind of disgusted reaction, but I was, I was pretty happy with that reaction. Now you were making a reference to a couple of the companies with uh, with which you've worked. How many different companies have you been featured in? Uh, right now, I wrestle uh, for Battle War up in Montreal. Um, I wrestle for ISW that runs in Connecticut, and sometimes Ottawa. I wrestle for C Four that runs in Ottawa, and I mean, I've wrestled little places here and there, but those are the three feds that I really work now. Uh, C4 runs monthly, uh, and ISW runs, uh, you know, every so often. Battle War also runs monthly. And this is one that I've really, um, I've been waiting to ask you about. There is a company that you work with called ISW, Interspecies Wrestling. Can you tell everybody a little bit more about that company? Uh, yeah, sure. Interspecies Wrestling, uh, is basically the place where I started. Um... I remember the first ever ISW match was on a spot show and they were featuring an species wrestling matchup and I was the first one. Like I came out um, with two managers as Giant Tiger and I wrestled this guy named Split Jones who I guess liked to smoke pot. <laughs> liked to smoke the uh the sticky icky. Hey. And uh <laughs> yeah. And um before the show, like, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't have the mask. I met uh, Mike Raj, who is the owner of the company, uh, in the parking lot. I, I knew him already before that, and he handed me a tiger mask, like, just a replica uh, tiger mask in the parking lot. He gave it to me an hour or two before the show, so I put it on. Then I went out and I did it. And Interspecies Wrestling is just it's pretty wacky. It's, I would definitely say it's an adult uh, wrestling company, and there's a lot of swearing um, most of it is done by me. There's a lot of nudity. Most of it is done by me. And, uh, I mean, yeah, I would, I would definitely say check it out. It's, you know, if you either don't like it or you either really, really like it. And I think, uh, it's, it's done a good job in the last uh, five years. No, it's been more than that. It's been eight years or something. I don't even know that it's been around, but I've uh, been there since day one. And uh, I'm still going strong, and I'm still there. And uh, there's there's been a lot of, like, stuff in ISW that's pretty memorable. Like, you know, there's, there's well, I don't even know what to say. Basically, all, all I know how to say is just check it out. It's a, it's a great fed. they got a lot of good wrestlers there. Uh, and they uh, run in Connecticut. Uh, they're doing a show June 15th in Ottawa uh, in the afternoon. So I'm going to be there. June 15th in Ottawa for ISW? Yep. Now, let me ask, if I could, having worked in um, in front of purely Canadian crowds and having worked in um, in front of purely uh, lower 48 crowds, can you give me a good viable contrast? Now, I know a lot of it's going to depend on the show and the chemistry in which the show is trying to build, but do you see that much of a major difference per, uh, between, per se, a show in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, or a show in, um, say, Middle Connecticut? Um, honestly, no. Honestly, no. Um, it's really the same kind of crowd because it's the same kind of product. It's the same product. So we attract the same kind of, like, you know, uh, 25 to 35-year-old tattooed male that gets really drunk and obnoxious and uh, throws stuff and like it's, it's really just the same thing everywhere you go whether it's Montreal or Ottawa, Connecticut if your if your product is kind of raunchy and and you know different and exciting then that's the kind of crowd that you're going to get uh, in my opinion I mean what the heck do I know um, but no I would say there really is no difference I have wrestled certain feds that are uh, you know a little bit more cleaner uh, no swearing, and I, uh, you know, just kind of try to adjust to that, um, and uh, try not to swear. I have a hard time, uh, believe it or not, I do have a hard, and I have a hard time if um, I'm wrestling and there's a lot of kids in the crowd. 
I, I try my hardest not to swear, uh, just because I don't want, you know, a parent to have to explain to a kid what a, a you know, whatever is, whatever word that I would use to describe somebody. Right. Um, and I, I just don't think it's pleasant to be a parent and to have children with you. And, you know, it's just swear words and men, you know, getting naked in the ring and making, uh, sex references and stuff like that. I don't think there's a place for it if there's children around. True. Uh, but if you are running in bars, and I mean, all bets are off, man. Like, I've done some pretty crazy stuff. Like, last night's W show, I made, uh, I made out with the drag queen in the ring. Uh, like, I would never do that if there were, like, a bunch of little kids in the crowd running around, right? But I think there was only one, so I did it. I, th- I think the analogy you and I can both use on this, it's okay to be a bad influence if it's all adults, but as far, when the kids are around, we're not going to be the bad influence. We're going to be the good, we're going to be the right influence, right? Right, right, right. Can you repeat that? Just because it broke up quite a bit. <laughs> if it's, if it's all adults, we can be the bad influence as long as it's all adults, but when there's kids involved and junior members of the fan base, we want to be the right influence, correct? Right, exactly, yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess it's basically it. I have no other way to answer that. <laughs> no, I mean you said it perfectly when you were talking about the fact that when you've got a, a when you've got a bar show and everybody is legal drinking age and above, they know that when okay, it's like the line that Bill Ingvall used: "Tequila was involved, get off me." And however, when you're working all ages show, when you've got a, when you've got families there, when you've got kids there, it's like you want to make sure that you're presenting the right image to where mom and dad are going to turn around and say, "Guess what? We're going to come back and spend money with them again," right? Yeah, sorry. Well, I'm just trying to adjust this. My phone's getting all uh, wacky on me. Well, um, is that better? I think so. I've I've been able to hear you perfectly the whole time. But um, now you were making a reference to another company with which you work. It's called Battle War. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? Yeah, I, I actually kind of understood what you just said, just because yeah. it's real staticky. But I understood the word Battle War, and I understood. Tell us a little bit about it. Uh, you can hear me fine, correct? Yes, I got you every word. Okay, perfect. I'm having a terrible time hearing you. Must be this baseball park I'm standing in in, in Montreal. Uh, Battle War is basically a um, it's a wrestling promotion in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Uh, and if you follow the IWS or uh, International Wrestling Syndicate, and you know guys like the Green Phantom and. Um, you know, Sexy Eddie and uh, 3.0 and guys like that, then uh, I would definitely check it out. It's uh, the place that I like to call home, the place that I like to wrestle. Um, it's downtown Montreal. Uh, we had El Generico's last independent wrestling match at Battle War, um, which the DVD is available. You can pick up DVD, smartmarkvideo.com slash Battle War. Um, can you check it out on Twitter? Uh, I believe it's battle underscore war at Twitter, um, Facebook, and you can check it out on YouTube, Battle War. And uh, it's a really cool uh, promotion that I'm extremely proud to be a part of. Uh, you know, we got guys like Frankie the Mobster and Twiggy and and all these new faces, guys like uh, Box Belmar and TDT. And, uh, like, the way I would explain it is it is wacky, like ISW, um, but there also is a lot of intensity in it. Uh, the only way, uh, like I can explain Battle War is just go on YouTube, uh, click up Battle War Wrestling and check out one of the, uh, videos of the shows, and, uh, then you'll get a pretty good idea of what it's all about. Um, there's a show coming up May 26th, it's Battle War 10, uh, and Battle War's been around for a year now. Um, uh, last show was April 21st, that was our year anniversary. And I wrestled uh, Archibald Peck, uh, and I actually beat him. So that was pretty sweet. Very cool. Now, if I could, um, you, any other dates that you've got coming up on the imme- in the immediate future? I'm sorry. Uh, what else have you got coming up for you in the in the near future? Where else can people find you? Uh, they can find me. I mean, you can just keep up to date with me on uh, Twitter. My Twitter handle is giant underscore tiger. Uh, my Facebook is Giant Tiger, but it's written really weird uh, because Facebook won't allow me to write Giant Tiger properly. So it's J I A N T T Y G E R. Uh, I mean, I really just wrestle for C4, which to me is probably one of the best 
uh, companies in Canada. I was there last night, and it's just, uh, it's, it's my absolute favorite place to wrestle. Um, because I do wrestle a lot of places. Um, Battle War is my favorite place here just because it's got a lot of, like, um, it makes me feel like I'm at home, but C4, uh, the guys that I wrestle for, uh, I team with Twiggy there. It, it really is an incredible place. Uh, C4 Wrestling, you can probably just search that up on Google and you'll find it. And um, if you haven't heard of C4 before, if you haven't seen it, I just do yourself a favor and check it out because to me it's, it's the best show that I've been to in a long time uh, just kind of watching uh, so I'm going to be at C4 June 15th, which is a double header with ISW. Uh, so if you go to ISW, you can also get to you also have the chance of seeing C4 later that night. Uh, I have Battle War May 26th. So I mean, if you follow Battle War C4 and ISW, you'll be able to find me. GT, I want to thank you for taking the time to come on with us this evening. I also want to invite you to come back on somewhere down the road. Um, if you've got other appearances you'd like to try to get the word out about, just let us know, okay? Okay, you got it, man. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, our very special guest at this time, Giant Tiger, has just gone beyond ringside, and we will be back on the Beyond Ringside Radio Network right after this. Welcome back into the On Ringside Live Sunday night, 23 minutes before the top of the hour. A fast study lane right here at the Radio Ranch. First off, I want to say a very special thank you to Giant Tiger for coming on with us this evening. Had a great time in that conversation, even though he wasn't able to hear half of what I was saying. His words. <laughs> We are working to have him back on with us a little bit further down the road. Be def definitely sure to check him out on Facebook and Twitter. And when you get a chance to catch Giant Tiger on the marquee, definitely. If the live events or anything like he was talking about on the show just a few minutes ago will be worth the price of admission and then some. I uh, want to say, of course, very special props to my, t um, to my friends and family with Global Championship Wrestling, my brothers and sisters in arms. Great outing this past Friday night at Tarrant. Uh, we were hoping to have word about the upcoming show. Um, they were scheduled to have a show. I do believe it's going to, I'm scheduled to be in Leeds, Alabama this coming Friday. Um, I'm going to try to have some more information about that as situations permit. Um, for those of us with global, <clears throat> all roads lead to Pell City, Alabama, Saturday night, May 25th, the Pell City Civic Center Global Warfare. Be sure to check out gcwpro.com for all upcoming show information through the, through the home promotion of global championship wrestling. Want to give a very special tip of the hat, Kevin Brannon, to everybody with LXW. Had a great time last night in Sylacauga, Alabama. The Plunder Buffet Battle Royal, excuse me, Plunder Buffet Rumble Royal or, um, for the uh, LXW Championship definitely was a sight to behold. There were some great matches on that card last night, and when you get a chance to, that will be available through Smartmark Video. Check out the LXW.tk. For um, the DVD release and also upcoming show information, I do believe LXW is going to be back in action on July the 20th and also had a chance to speak with Kevin about his other product, um, product project, all of the above, which would be IWA Deep South. And a lot of people know that the late summer months, I do believe early fall, is when the uh, Carnage Cup, which is an ultra-violent tournament, is scheduled to take place. I understand that um, the Carnage Cup is going to be probably around November of 2013. So definitely keep your eyes open for that. For those who indulge, now this is one thing. IWA Deep South does specialize in the ultraviolet style. But when they do the Carnage Cup shows, they have something for everyone. And a lot of people will compare to CZW Combat Zone Wrestling. And I understand that this year I've heard the rumors that a number of the faces that you've seen with Combat Zone and originally with IWA Mid-South, are going to be coming in for the Deep South show. Also, finding out um, there is a company on the horizon called Birmingham Hardcore Wrestling. Uh, they're running out of the heart of the Birmingham metropolitan area. A uh, good friend of mine and good friend of ours here on the show, I'll put it that way, a great friend of ours here on the show, the Angel of Death, John Rare, 
Um, myself, Mabo Tunzi, Mark Bowman, Adam Coffey had a chance to speak with John last night about Birmingham Hardcore. Um, they've got an event coming up in the very near future. John's going to get us more information on that, along with uh, Michael Frog Ray and the rest of the crew from Birmingham Hardcore, BHW. Uh, you know, I've kind of made the reference earlier in the show to, and Allie backed me up over in the chat room, and a number of folks throughout um, Twitter, Facebook have backed me up on this one. For as much as I appreciate what WWE is trying to do post WrestleMania, knowing the fact that Punk's out, Taker's sketchy, of course, again, and you've got a number of people who are working hurt. Not to mention with the advent of the the, the public nature of the um, medical condition of Dolph Ziggler, and that is something that we wanted to hit on early in the show, but we got we digress and we get sidetracked on this show, and we're the first ones to admit it. I mean, you've got a great combination of individuals who are involved in the sport and the world of professional wrestling um, on the inside, on the outside, and on the in-between. And when we get together and we start in conversation, there's no telling which way we're going to go. Sometimes I have bullet points and show notes ready to go for an episode, and I try to stay to those show notes. Today, I did not, because it has been that crazy. Um, everybody, um, you know, it's public knowledge, and I lay it out there about my work schedule. And the way that things have been going here around um, getting ready to change locations. So I've had a lot on me in that particular regard. And the rest of the cast has been tremendous. And I want to say I've said it on Twitter. I've said it on Facebook. And I've said it publicly on air. Mabo has been kicking ass and taking names as far as working to set up interviews and helping with the uh, booking side. And it is greatly appreciated. So, like I say, in, for those listening who are involved in pro wrestling in one capacity or another... If Mark Bowman, i.e. Mabo, M-A underscore B-O over on Twitter gets in touch with you about coming on BR, guess what? He may not be on air full time right now. He is our front man for the Beyond Ringside Radio Network. So it's definitely legit. It's definite real. Take him up on the invitation. We'd love to have you come on. Just like I say, for those, and we've had a number of promoters getting in touch with us recently about, hey, can I come on and talk about our show? Yes, get in touch with Mabo. <laughs> That's plain and simple. That's the easy way to do it. He handles it. Um, taking a look at the lineup, and we're going to go into it a little bit more in depth and offer up predictions when the full cast gets back together next week here on BR. Uh, you've got the WWE Championship match, John Cena and Ryback. It's going to be a last man standing match. Um, I don't know about you, but I think this is the third last man standing match that WWE has done in the last 12 months. Uh, you've got Triple H, Brock Lesnar in a steel cage match. You haven't seen that many of those from WWE in recent days, so I'm glad to see them bringing back the steel cage for the night. Um, with the medical condition of Dolph Ziggler, I wonder how things are going to work out with the triple threat match for the world for the world title. Um, if they're talking full concussion, if they're talking retrograde amnesia, um, then there is probably no way that he is going to be involved in that match. And I do believe making it a number one contenders match just to see what's going to happen with Dolph in real life as far as the uh, memory and the head um, head injuries go. They've given all the latitude in the world to people like John Cena. They've given it to CM Punk. They've given it to a number of champions over the course of the existence of Vince McMahon's promotion. And I would like to hope for a moment that considering how hard he has worked and how, how much he has busted his ass to get where he is, that they will give Dolph Ziggler that same kind of leeway and that same kind of treatment. Uh, strap match which for years was known as an Indian strap match, Sheamus and Mark Henry. Now, I really do think, and you can like me or love me or hate me on this one, this match has actually gotten a great build-in. It's gotten a great story told to it. I like Mark Henry the same way I like the big show, as monsters. Some people will never let him get past the sexual chocolate bit. And I was wrong about Seamus because I felt that Seamus would be sketchy as a face character. I didn't know how well it would go over. Because I felt that Seamus as a heel, as a pure power heel, which Vince hates those long term. It is so obvious. But you can only have someone be unstoppable for so long. Before it, I mean, I think the last time they really did it in pro wrestling was uh, Goldberg. And people started to get bored with that. That's why they changed the dynamic of his character in ring. 
And the other publicized match that they've got up on WWE.com is an Extreme Rules match, Randy Orton versus The Big Show. I'm going to go ahead and say this. There's no way in hell, by the laws of logic outside of WWE creative, that Randy Orton survives this match. To put a, let's say, let's put a Singapore cane in the Big Show's hands. You would have to put a 357 in the hand of Randy Orton. Because show delivers one solid swing of that cane. Randy Orton's head or spleen, depending on the point of impact, will end up in the sixth row. Randy Orton cannot generate that much power to really genuinely fell somebody like the Big Show unless you aim straight for the head first, the crown, the top of the head, or you aim for the knees first to take him down to a lower level and get a better swing. Overhead swing with that cane doesn't work. Sideway parallel baseball swing does work. Golf swing, not exactly great. But, and I'm sure they're going to release more matches and they're going to clarify a lot of things over the next week. You've got Raw, Main Event, and SmackDown coming up between now and the pay-per-view. And you know that they're going to be covering a lot more of that. Impact Wrestling is on the way to Slammiversary. Sunday, June 2nd, it will be live on pay-per-view from Boston at the Agonist Arena. And I hope I pronounced that right. How many matches have they genuinely openly stated for the pay-per-view? One. And kids, we're this close. I'm on impact. I'm, I'm on slammiversary.com. They are advertising one match right now for the World Heavyweight Championship, Sting versus Bully Ray. They do not have another match advertised for this show and it's three weeks away. Sunday, June 2nd. Today is the 12th of May. You have got three weeks before supposedly one of your biggest pay-per-views of the year. And you're advertising one match. There are so many people who sit back and say that Matt Morgan should be the one in that match, not Sting. I don't know who Matt Morgan has pissed off in the front office. And that's the only way that I can ask that question. And that is with all due respect to Matt Morgan and to Sting. I love Sting. He has always been one of my favorites since the character inception that I first found out about in the mid-80s over in the Universal Wrestling Federation, Bill Watts promotion, Mid-South Sports. I genuinely enjoyed Sting and watching the way he has progressed in professional wrestling. But at this point in time, let's put credibility on the table. And you're talking to somebody who would die for the opportunity to interview Sting. I would love to do that. Because I would like to ask him how he genuinely responds to the critics who say that he should not be in that main event. I would be very respectful in asking that, just like I know he would be very honest in his answer. But I don't know who Matt Morgan has ticked off in the front office of TNA. Because it seemed like for the longest time, he would get that close to the world title. That close to the world title match. And the push would stop. Done. Over with disappeared, come back two months later, and you never hear about the injury report. Why? And that is one question right there. That is the longest and the hardest question in the world. Why? Because a lot of people genuinely feel that Matt Morgan should have had at least two runs with the TNA championship between um, now, by now. So, I mean, put that world in proper perspective. Uh, taking a look at Ring of Honor real quick. They've got an upcoming event next weekend, May 18th in Richmond, Virginia. And then they are, um, that is going to be, hmm, their next pay-per-view event is scheduled for June 22nd. So they've got about five weeks between now and best of the world, best in the world 2013. Definitely looking forward to that. ROH pay-per-views, I'm going to say this, are some of the best grassroots down home wrestling pay-per-views that you will find. They do get caught up in trying to push a little forced drama every once in a while. And there is a difference between ex executing the psychology of a storyline in professional wrestling and forced drama. Most people with the IQ above dried wallpaper paste will know this. That's the easy way to say it. So for the, um, those in the Richmond, Virginia area, definitely check it out. Ring of Honor is coming to your area at the Greater Richmond Convention Center, Hall B, on May 18th, 
Tickets are still available. Check out ROHWrestling.com for upcoming information. And for our good friends over at Chikara, definitely check out ChikaraPro.com backslash event or slash events. You've got a an event coming up. It is going to be tremendous. The Tag World Grand Prix 2013 is on May 18th. Chicago, Illinois. We were working to try to get Gavin Loudspeaker, Loud and Noxious from Chikara and um, Kaiju Big Battle. And... Um, we weren't sure how things were going to work out this week, but with the event coming up on the 18th, folks, for those of you in the Chicago area and the surrounding areas, Logan Square Auditorium is going to be the place to be. Because when Jakara puts it together, when they put together tournaments, they think things out. And they put things together in a way that is going to be entertaining and give you your money's worth from start to finish. The Tag World Grand Prix 2013 is going to be two stages. It is going to be um, an afternoon and an evening session. Check out ChikaraPro.com. You're going to have all the information. There are so many great teams that are going to be involved in this. The Baltic Siege, Los Ice Creams, the Bravado Brothers. A lot of these you've seen on national television. A lot of these you've seen on pay-per-view. A lot of these you've seen on DVD and live events. I mean, and there are some teams that I haven't had a chance to see. There are teams that I have seen, and there are teams that I haven't seen in a while. Now, I haven't had a chance to check out the Kentucky Buffet. I would be interested in finding out more about them. Heidi Lovelace and Saturine. I would love, this is, they're going to be fun to watch. I mean, the Spectral Envoy, they are going to be fun to watch. And that is something, and those who made it to the Chikara Portadel show, I really wanted to be there for that. I really do. I really did. Finances did not allow. But I, everybody with whom I've spoken, I spoke about 15 people who went to the Porterdale show for Chikara. Nobody had a negative comment. Everybody was positive. And like I said, this was not a tournament show. This was a great opportunity for you to get out and check out Chikara live in person. So once again, on the 18th, for our friends up in Chicago, Definitely check it out. The Tag World Grand Prix from Chikara. Check out Chikara Pro Wrestling. Excuse me, ChikaraPro.com. It is definitely going to be worth it. Said it earlier, I'll say it again. Get the hell away from your television sets. Go check out the live shows. Go check out live events. There are so many of them out there. And honestly, I've said it before, I'll say it again. You owe it to yourself if you call yourself a wrestling fan. You damn right. Go experience it live in person. Yes, it's going to be different than what you see on television. But in reality, and for all intent and purposes, it's going to be better. Uh, let me swing around here and hit this. Whoop, hold on, try that again. <laughs> With the best of modern digital technology at my fingertips, and every once in a while I'll hit the wrong button. Um, like I said, there is a strong chance that we'll be bumping the start time up next week to 5 Central, 6 Eastern for Beyond Ringside. Um, I'm going to get with Dino. I'm going to get with the rest of the cast and see who all is able to make it out to Buffalo's. If, if the logistics are functional and positive, we will do the show from Buffalo Wild Wings next Sunday, 6 Eastern, 5 Central. Right here on the Beyond Ringside Radio Network. I want to invite everybody to join Wicked Nemesis, Tasha Simone, Mad Dog, Matt Denton. Smart Rage, the entire cast of the To Be Determined show this coming Wednesday night, 10 Eastern, 9 Central, right here on BeyondRingside.com. And I, they may be able to get everything on their Ustream channel as well. Um, real quick, I just want to run it down. Mabo, thank you for setting up all the interviews. Dude, tremendous. You rock. I owe you dinner all over again. I was going to buy a Whataburger last night, but you pulled out the coupons and said you were going to take So I'm going to buy you wings somewhere down the road. And if we make it to Buffalo's next week, I'll still buy the wings, even though we're going to get them free. <laughs> Tons, it was great to see you last night. John Rare, always great to see you at the shows. Um, it, Kevin Brandon, thank you again for all the hospitality and the professionalism. I really enjoyed it last night. LXW, looking forward to great things. Uh, to my tag team partners here on the show, to the Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis, at Wicked Nemesis on Twitter. Uh, Ted Guinness, at Ted Guinness. If you don't know how to spell Guinness, buy a damn beer. Uh, at Tasha F. And Simone over on Twitter for the multi-time women's world champion Tasha Simone and at Words from <laughs> Words from Prism for Mad Dog Matt Denton. On a separate note, yours truly, you can find me at Fast Eddie Lane over on Twitter. 
Uh, Facebook.com slash Fast Study Lane. If you're sending me stuff to the um, to the friends page, my personal page, I may not accept the friend request. Please, please, please. Facebook.com slash Fast Eddie Lane. That's the easy way to find me. All information is going to go up there. Uh, at Beyond Ringside, one word, run it all together over on Twitter. Facebook.com slash Beyond Ringside Live is the fan page. 5,328 friends over on Facebook on Facebook.com slash Beyond Ringside. And there are 1,628, I'm looking now, friends waiting to be approved over on Facebook. Please go to the Facebook fan page. We are on YouTube. We are on Ustream. And you can find the podcast on iTunes. Also, you can click the damn link on Facebook and Twitter. Ha ha! For all of us here on Beyond Ringside, we'll see you next Sunday night, 6.30 Eastern, 5.30 Central, 3.30 Pacific. For the Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis. For the voice, Ted Guinness. For the champ, Tasha Simone. For Mark Mabo Bowman. For Mad Dog, Matt Denton. And I hope I got everybody. Giant Tiger, thank you again for coming on. This is Fast Study Lane saying adios. Das Vidanya. Hasta luego. Off Leader saying ciao. Sayonara. Adieu. Adivaderci. Birmingham, come find me Tuesday night at the Iron Horse in Hoover. Friday night at Buffalo Wild Wings in Alabaster. Yeah. And good luck in our new location. Till next time, aloha means bye-bye. Join us next week as we all go beyond ringside. Bye-bye.